you've found AHO Radio, where authentic human outliers come in together to help heal the fear of being authentic, to bring back genuine human conversation. No hype, no sensationalism, just honest talk about the critical issues affecting society, affecting humankind. And now, here are the hosts of AHO Radio, John Karotek and Bill Peratzman. Hey, listeners, I'm super, super excited about this episode of AHO Radio. Bill Prosman out there on the West Coast. I'm on the West Coast here in Florida. He's California. Uh, he is the consummate lover of music and trying to help and has been helping, not trying. He has been helping people with music as a healing modality. And he's also a very accomplished musician uh, himself. And, you know, the thing that we're doing with this, I said inaugural, is that today we're going to discuss a song in Bill's life that uh, that that basically struck a chord with him? No, no pun intended. And anyhow, Bill, thanks for being here. How you doing, buddy? Hey, John. I'm real happy and you know glad to be doing this. It's so amazing to me that the the I don't know what you want to call it the bandwidth that's being taken up right now by musicians performing, streaming online, and uh, you can get them everywhere. Bands in town. YouTube's got live stuff. Um, they've got recorded stuff. And every artist who's anybody right now is just jumping in and, and making music happen for everybody for free. What a, what a gift we have right now. I'm, I'm going to talk about one of those today, but um, a little bit first, because I think it's important to sort of level set on this inaugural episode of where we're coming from here. Uh, the, the research is that your music is the most powerful for you. And that's true for me, too. So the music that I love is my most powerful music in terms of its impact. And what I want to do over the however long we continue to do this is to just offer musicians content to you in a new way, in a fresh way, hopefully getting you thinking about the way that you approach your own music. And to do that, we'll take an example uh, song every time we do one of these. And uh, they won't be mine. I want to use mainstream songs that are out there that people know. And we'll just take it apart and kind of investigate how it is that that song works on us in a very simple way. And because these songs are all, um, they, the royalties for them belong to the artists that, artists that made them, we'll list a URL in this in this show notes so you can go and actually hear the song if you're not familiar with it. Uh, we'll try to do that on YouTube so you can see the lyrics as well and, and uh, offer you that as sort of a way in on your music. And more importantly, if there's any music you'd like to hear me cover this way, uh, drop us a comment either on the AHO page or in the specific episode, and we'll watch those comments. And if there's a song you want to hear me take apart, uh, then please put it there, and we'll try to get to all of those songs as we go down the road. So without any further preliminary here. Um, yeah, I just had a couple of comments to make about that. You yeah, know, mu music yeah. is the, it's the universal language. And, you know, me as a poet, you know, music is poetry set to sound. And there's not a person listening that doesn't have a, playlist that they love you know we know that and what bill does is bill looks at those playlists and he can know pretty much where you're coming from uh all these songs in our lives have come at us during different times and we can relate to them emotionally so you know what song are we pulling out today bill oh man so um i've been tuning into the npr tiny desk concerts if you haven't seen them they're amazing it's a half hour show of amazing, just incredible artists that come and do uh, basically an acoustic set at the offices at NPR. And now it's all gone virtual, so they're doing these from home and stuff. But the song that I heard that really grabbed me was when I was watching the Brittany Howard uh, Tiny Desk concert. Brittany's been around for a while, but she's doing her own band now and writing her own stuff. And uh, she came in and did this concert. I was mesmerized. I couldn't believe that what I was watching happen was happening. And... Uh, and, I, and the week before, I think I'd watched Lizzo. So I was, I, I, the levels were set, man. Lizzo is incredible. We'll talk about some of her stuff eventually. But the song I want to talk about today is called Goathead. Goathead, which is a delicacy in some cultures, you know, when you serve it as food. <laughs> I don't but, know if I'm going to eat that, but I not, know. But not in, not in this culture. So um, I'm listening to this song, and I think this was the final song in her set. I don't remember for sure, but the song just had this groove. It's a very sort of, I, I don't want to say it's monotone in any way, but there's just like, the, there's music that lasts for a couple of minutes before she actually gets around to singing. And the music isn't moving very fast. It's not really going anywhere. It's just kind of setting a mood. 
And I had never heard this song before, so this is the first listen to Goathead, and this mood is just getting into me, and I'm starting to just chill and mellow with the, with the kind of groove that, they're, that they've got going. And I know, because I've listened to a lot of music, I know that when, there's, when that's going on before the words kick in, that it's a setup. They're just setting me up to hear something. And as it turned out, they were setting me up to hear something important. But even after the words kicked in, I was still a little bit wondering what was going on. So if you're listening, if you're, if you think of your own music right now, if you're listening to a song that's got that long intro that's just kind of chill and mellow and you're just like starting to sync with it and entrain to it, you know that when the words hit, there's something important that's going to be said. And sure enough. So if you know Goathead or not, um, wow. So the first words that kick in are pretty like, you know, they're pretty you know, not, not, there's nothing heavy about them. See, tomatoes are green, cotton is white, my heroes are black. So why God got blue eyes? And I'm thinking to myself, oh, this is interesting. But I'm still in that chill thing. So I'm just kind of like riding with it. And she's singing. And the next words she sings are, my daddy stayed. My grandmama's a maid. My mama was brave to take me outside. And right here is where everything changed because mama is white and daddy is black. When I first so we're married, talking social commentary to the social com Oh my gosh. So all of a sudden I felt my heart just go boom. Wow. So what's so tell so goat head. I mean, come, yeah. on, now. So, come on now. So Yeah, so now I'm all of a sudden, like I'm listening to this and I'm and I'm wide awake. I'm I'm alert. You know, all of a sudden she's gotten into my head. The thing that happened in her life, she puts in the lyrics. Who slashed my dad's tires and put a goat head in the back? Mm -mm -mm. I guess I wasn't supposed to know that. Too bad. I guess I'm not supposed to know because I'm brown, not black. But who said that? See, I'm black, not white. But I'm that. I'm this, right? So the, the, the song is dealing with what it's like to be a mixed-race child growing up in the South. And when, you, when that comes home to you, the music has so set you up that when Brittany sings those lines, all of a sudden you feel it. Or at least I felt, I think you're supposed to feel it, John. You know, that's yeah, the point of the song. It's to set you up and then hit you with this thing. It's like, <gasps> you, wanna heal, you wanna hear yourself inhaling and, take, and catching your breath on this. Well, and therein lies the whole thing with music that we were both, you know, alluding to that, you know, the, the pain, the joy, you know, all these different emotions in life that these artists are able to track in music that we can hear and enjoy and sometimes take that breath away moment. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. You know, so that, that's an amazing song. Now, tell us a little bit about that artist, you know, a little bit more about her. Or... You know, I, I don't have a whole lot of G2 on Brittany. Um, she's been around a while and, and definitely a working artist. I think she's been in some other bands, but this project, her, her band where she's the lead, uh, relatively new, maybe last couple of years, I think. Um, as I said, I wish I had more G2 on this. When the, when the song hits you that way and gets you on the emotional level, oh, man. of course, it springs you out and you want to know more. And um, w the way that that happens for me is not so much about collecting all the data, but just hearing more music. Like I wanna, I wanna hear what else she has to say, right? I, she's brave enough to say this, what else has Brittany Howard got for us? What other, what other information has she got? You know, it's like when you write a poem, you put it out there and then people respond to that poem and they want to hear more of what your poetic voice has to say. And, and that I think is the real inspiration in Goathead. It's like, yeah, tell me more, tell me more. How do you respond to that? What kind of music are you making as well as this hugely, uh, the, the, the huge impact of this emotional music? And it's and right so in you, there, you know. You had no well, you had no idea what it was about when you when you first started listening to it. Yeah, not not a thing, not a clue. I was totally open on this. Never heard Brittany Howard before in any way, and uh, th I think this was the closer. I'll have to look back on that to to confirm it. But yeah, watch your wow. NPR tiny desk. You'll get the whole picture right there. So uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not going too deep into this because I want to just set it up. So uh, again, the music that opens the opens the space and just sort of holds that space open for a while and lets you entrain to it you know that something big's coming. And it, it certainly does with Goathead. It just gets you right in the heart.
and it doesn't make you, it doesn't, there's no call to action. You know, I always like to say, have a CTA. There's no call to action on this except just to be there, just to be present with that, that, that paradox of what it's Yes, and, and, and the connection too, the artist's connection, like you were just mentioned in poetry, the connection to those listening that can relate, maybe not to a goat head in the back of their parent's car, but, uh, you know, they can relate to that kind of, it, um, situation. Yeah, hatred. It, it's it's nothing more than hatred. And perhaps it's misguided. She doesn't even offer any judgment on that. She basically just says, this is who I am. Wow. Well, there, yeah, that's there, there you go. Pretty impactful. Goathead by Brittany Howard. Yeah, it makes you think and, and makes you feel. And more than that, because there's no CTA, it, it no call to action, it just leaves it there for you to process, like on your own. How do you process that? What do you do with that? That's a heavy, heavy song. And that's the beauty of music, that there's the voice of the artist that's able to portray imagery through the music, you know, bringing you in, lull, lull, you know, lulling you in, and then hitting you with uh, raw emotions about social commentary that, you know, so often people take for granted, but some people are living that. Oh, yeah, living it day to day. Now, the, the, the only thing I want to observe about this for myself is that this song's really gotten into me, as you can probably tell. And I like to have a song that matches up with a practice. So this song has somehow gotten into my resilience practice. So when I need to be resilient, oftentimes just remembering this song will give me the emotional energy that I need to bring to my resilience. The feelings are there for me. So resilience for me is like, it, it, it includes that paradoxical feeling of this happened, whatever it is, COVID-19, growing up in a, a mixed race, hateful environment, uh, whatever the situation, you've got to acknowledge that. And then to bring in the facts, yeah, there was a goat head in the back of my family's car. It just sort of makes it concrete and it sparks my energy to take the next step. Whatever that step is, it's like, you've got to know clearly where you're going but you also got to know clearly where you are. And, and that's this, and that's the language, yeah. Go ahead, just brings it right down for me. And and that's a beautiful thing. So uh, yeah, that's my resilience song right now. For some crazy reason, that's the song that speaks to me of resilience. Well, that's awesome. You know, thanks for sharing that. You know, I'm looking forward to the next episode of music uh, and interpretation and how it can help us in our lives. It's like I said to earlier, you know, Bill can take your song list and he can... He's been doing this a while. He can kind of figure out where you're at. And I know that when I sent him my song list, you know, he kind of read me like a book. So it works. You know, the things that you're doing with Music Care Incorporated. And uh, as long as you've been doing this, you know, you're, you're definitely making some good strides. So thanks for sharing. Go ahead. You bet, buddy. And thank you. Let's do this again. Often. Looking forward to it. I can't wait to hear the next song, man. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Aho Radio. Information we mentioned is probably in the show notes, but if we missed anything, please let us know and we'll get it added for you. Subscribe to the Aho Radio channel on YouTube to stay connected. And as always, we wish you health, success, and significance. Aho!